removing this compressor is actually pretty simple. It just takes time to do everything right. Okay, the first thing you do is evacuate the system. I went to a shop and had them do it for me, so there's no Freon in the, in the system right now. So next thing you do, take the negative battery cable loose because you don't want to short. Now, to get the, the compressor out, you don't have to remove it from inside. Slide it along the bottom here, move the hose out of the way, and bring it all out in one piece here. The only way you're going to do that is to remove some stuff. Uh, first thing you do, there's some clips right here. These are the relays. Take those clips, put a screwdriver in there, pop those loose, and then pull this all out. Put it to the side so you can have room here. Next thing you do is disconnect the fans. Um, there's a couple of bolts, as you can see here, some 10 millimeters. Hit those. Uh, remove the harnesses. They plug, unplug right out, and then all this will come out in one piece. Uh, this hose here, I'm going to keep this piece here that runs from here going down to the compressor. Uh, best way to do it is get a hose removal tool. Pop this out and they come out right here. There's about three washers that hold it in there. And then um, then you take the splash guard from the bottom. You're probably going to have to go up under there. 10 millimeter bolts. Take the little splash shield off, just a piece of plastic. Remove it so you can reach the, the harnesses and the bolt here that holds this to the uh, compressor. And once you get that bolt under the bottom to the compressor off, and this clip off, all this will be able to move around so you can move this off to the side so you can get your hand in there and move everything out once you release two bolts that's on the side right here. Uh, one will come completely out, one won't. Just unbolt that one until it's back all the way out. You can just take it all out, slide it, and pull it up like this. Of course, you're going to have to, um, if you don't know how to do it, uh, there's a uh, a pulley tensioner here that you gotta uh, get the proper tool and uh, get it where it moves so you can take the belt off and there's the the dryer that I gotta take off it's all one piece goes in runs all the way down and over here it's just held in with a couple of clips along the side here so you don't have to take anything off like the reservoir to the radiator or anything off like that and then once all this is off Loosen those two bolts at the bottom. Reach in there with your hand. Pull everything out because everything's going to be able to move over. So you'll be able to move all this stuff out of the way so you can reach in. Slide everything out up to here. You're going to have to move this hose a little bit. It gives a little bit. And slide everything out like that. And putting the compressor in is just the reverse. You put it in. Slide it across the bottom here. Up to right here. And then you just worked uh, two bolts in or at least one to get it to go in and then the other one you can just adjust and line it up tighten them down and then put everything back the way they were with the last thing this back on now here's the components I'm going to use uh, this is a brand new compressor it's not a it's an aftermarket but it'll, it'll be fine uh, we have oil for the AC unit you're gonna need that you're definitely gonna have to flush the system and I got Freon, and I got the dryer hose that you have to replace because due to the fact this is almost impossible to, to clean out because of this canister, so a flushing this would do you no good, especially if your compressor failed because it had contaminants in it. The contaminants will be in there, so you're going to have to change that regardless. So here we go. What I'm going to do here is on this. There's storage oil in here that they put in there when they packed it. You're going to have to drain that out, properly dispose of it, but you got to drain it out. And you'll have to use this. Uh, you look at your, look at your uh, maintenance manual to know how much of this goes in here, and then the rest goes into the system itself. Uh, but before you do that, you got to remove the old dryer. you got to remove the old compressor then you gotta flush it with this to get all the crud and everything out of the condensers and yada 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 and once you do that once the I want you finish flushing and it's vacuumed out compressed out so all it evaporated 
Then you can put this on, put this on. Make sure when you put the oil in there and you put the cap back on, to rotate, rotate this at least 10 times to get the lubrication to work all the way through from the front to the back. So when you first start it up, it ain't dry and it's gonna mess anything up. Okay, once you put this in and that in and put everything back together, then you're gonna have to uh, vacuum the system, put a vacuum pump. That's gonna take about 30 minutes to pressurize the system, get all the moisture and all the air out of the system. And after 30 minutes, then you can charge the system. My particular one for the Taurus, I think from 1996 to 2007, holds three of these 12 ounce cans. So this will be more than enough. Uh, what's ever left over after you put the oil in here, the rest goes into the system itself the same way this went in. And this lubricates everything from uh, the compressor to the dryer and all the hoses and the condensers and everything else in the system. Now, after everything is done, the AC should work the way it's supposed to and it won't be making that crazy humming and squeaking noise. Found out it was uh, the compressor, this old. This is the original compressor. That was the original compressor on the car, and they had about 171,000 miles on that compressor. So it wasn't a, about a major failure, failure or contaminants in the system. It was just an old compressor. This needed to be out. And then after we're done with this, everything should work fine. And the AC should run colder because it wasn't running as cold as it used to before it started making this noise. So hopefully that will fix everything. And then we'll go from there. Until next video, see ya.